Today I am going to discuss some of the images that are from my image bank and I think that these concepts are need to be made clear if it is not clear so I am discussing those images only. First is the reabsorption cycle of the nephron. As you can see in PCT 67% of the sodium, 67% of the water, 80% of the bicarbonate 100% of glucose and 100% of amino acid is being absorbed. So if a question says that in complete ADH secretion, if uh, the patient is having full ADH secretion, then which part of the nephron will absorb the most part of water? Then it is the same answer that is the PCD because it absorbs 67% of the total water. Another important concept is the principal cell and the intercalated cell principal cell as you can see absorbs the sodium excretes potassium and the potassium is reabsorbed and hydrogen is secreted by the intercalated cells next is the clearance graph which was also asked in aria neat pg pah is simply excreted so you can see the level is more than that of inulin inulin is best for estimation of GFR but since humans excrete normally creatinine so creatinine is the most commonly studied parameter for GFR after that glucose is absorbed but after a certain plasma concentration it is excreted so here is the glucose next important concept is playing so what is playing that the excreted and filtered amount is not in right angle. This is because of transport saturation. Sab logo ka capacity alag hota hai, waise hi transport ka saturation bhi alag hota hai. Kisi kisi logo ka pehle saturation aa jata hai. Kisi kisi logo ka baad mein saturation aata hai, transports ka. So for that, there is a curvature. This is called splaying and this is the reason of splaying. Coming to blistering disorders, there are two kind of blistering disorders that is the femphigus group if there is intraepidermal split and the femphigoid group if there is dermoepidermal split so intraepidermal matlab upar mein hota hai usme flaccid bulla milega imagine karo ek go balloon ka theek hai agar tum usko half fulaoge to wo flaccid rahega agar tum usko full fulaoge then it is the femphigoid group so femphigoid group mein tense blister milta hai but tum to feel karke dekh nahi sakte ho so, kaisa pata chalega kaun sa tense hai kaun sa flaccid hai for that you have to see the shining appearance if it is shiny then it is a tense because in balloon also if it is tense it is shiny first is the femphigus fallacious in diagram you won't see any blisters because it is subcorneal split so itna patla layer hai wo apne aap hi exfoliate karke utar jata hai and it is seen in the seboric distribution. Seboric distribution means in the chest, in the back, in the axilla, in the groin. These all areas. Here you don't usually see oral involvement. Next is the femphigus vulgaris. There would be flaccid bulla. Oral erosions are present and the split is suprabasal. And you see a row of tombstone appearance. On DIF in both of the two disorders you will see fish net appearance because Desmoglin 3 and Desmoglin 1 are present throughout the epidermis. Concentration is different. Like in Femphigus vulgaris, you get the concentration more in the below side. In Femphigus fallacious, it will be more towards the upper side because it is the subcorneal level split. Another genetic disorder that is the Haley Haley disease, there are flaccid erosions on the axilla and the groin, that is the intertriginous area. Here you will see dilapidated brick wall appearance. Femphigoid disorders as bullous femphigoid. I told you to see the sign. Here you can see the signy appearance. That means these are tense bulla. And history of itching will also be given. On examination you see this is the epidermis. And this is the dermis completely separated from each other. Here you will get a linear deposition because in the dermoepidermal junction the split is occurring. Linear IgA bullous disorder there would be a string of pearl appearance as you can see. Like this is one blister, one blister, one blister, another four blisters arranged in ring of pearl appearance. Dermatitis herpetiformis here maybe you won't get any blister because the history will be given 
ऑफ इंटेंस प्रोराइटस इंटेंस प्रोराइटस सो अगर खुजली करोगे तो फिर तो ब्लिस्टर बर्स्ट हो ही जाएगा ना सो दैट इज द पॉइंट दैट यू माइट नॉट गेट एनी ब्लिस्टर्स दीज आर सीन इन एल्बो नीज एंड इन द फिंगर्स ओके एंड ऑन डी आई एफ यू गेट ग्रैनुलर आई जी ए डिपोजिशन इन द डरमर पैपिला इन एनेस्थिशिया मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट एंड नीट पी जी इज रेगुलरली आस्किंग ऑन द सी पी आर सो दिस इज द रेस्क्यू पोजिशन दिस वॉज आस्ट इन आर इयर नीट पी जी इन चाइल्ड हाउ यू शुड गिव द सी पी आर वन थर्ड इट शुड एंटर एंड ऑल द पैरामीटर्स यू नीड टू नो दिस इज द हेमलिच मैनूवर हेमलिच मैनूवर इन इनफैंड वट यू हैव टू डू फाइव बैक स्लैप्स आफ्टर दैट फॉलोड बाई फाइव चेस्ट कंप्रेशन दिस इज द ऑटोमेटेड एक्सटर्नल डिफिब्रिलेटर and this is how it is positioned and the electric current flows in this direction in the direction of the heart only the current flows some of the x ray appearances of tumor the trap door sign as you can see this trap door sign seen in simple bone cyst aneurysmal bone cyst before the bone fusion after bone fusion this is the giant cell tumor and in giant cell tumor you will get giant cells but the malignant cells are the mononuclear cells after that is the osteochondroma where you will see a protuberance but actually the lesion is larger than that seen on the x ray because it has a hyaline cap cafe au lait macule precocious puberty and a image of fibrous dysplasia this gives to the diagnosis of mccune albright syndrome another important topic of orthopedics are the instrument first is the bone nibbler as you can see it can nibble parts of the bone bone cutter it is sharp end okay bone nibbler is blunt end bone cutter is sharp end to cut the bones chisel and osteotome difference many of you don't get what is the difference or don't know what are these two so chisel you know hammer and chisel are used to cut and carve any kind of monuments and any kind of stones and all so in chisel there will be one side sloping as you can see in the image and in osteotome it is used for bone cutting it has two side beveled end so one side beveled is chisel and two side beveled is the osteotome ostin mood prosthesis there are two os in the prosthesis so you can remember ostin mood it also has two os and thomson prosthesis there is no empty space in between k wire both the ends are pointed and in the pins only one end is pointed in denham's and steeman how you can differentiate in denham there are ridges and it is used for the cancellous bones steeman spin is used for the cortical bones this is the miliary mottling small 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 miliary mottling appearance it is seen most commonly in the miliary tuberculosis but also seen in histoplasmosis pulmonary alveolar proteinosis varicella zoster pneumonia silicosis and pulmonary hemosiderosis this is a right sided pneumothorax hyperlucency and you can see the collapsed lung also present there if it is a normal e fast then you will see the seashore sign because kya hota hai wahan pe movement ho raha hai lungs and the chest wall ka agar movement band ho jata hai then everything will be still so it is a barcode or stratosphere sign which is a positive e fast pulmonary effusion you can see the meniscus sign but in hydro pneumothorax there is a straight line in pneumomediastinum you can see the continuous diaphragm sign so if you got any concepts correct maybe the femficus one and the femficoid one then do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and if you want the pdf then all the links are given in the description box below few questions from this pdf have come directly in the fmg exam also and previously i did one mcq discussion video where i talked about how to differentiate between the ulcers so the venous ulcer also came in the fmg so this is up for today all the best for your need pg exam